So that takes us really to, uh, to the little second part of the podcast, which is really the geostrategic reasons for America to be in Afghanistan. And to do this, to really understand those, I think in a way we can look at the immediate sort of things people are sort of saying about, you know, they went in to destroy Al-Qaeda or get Osama bin Laden, or uh, consistent with the theme of this podcast, we want to look at some of the deeper roots in history and how the past is not really past. It's still amongst us today. And in particular, I think we want to look at a figure, the sort of intellectual successor to Har- Harvard uh, Mackinder, a man named Zbigniew Wrozinski, who was a Polish-American who had a PhD from Harvard, I think, and was at the heart of discussions around uh, American foreign policy or, or geo-strategy from the sort of 1950s through to uh, relatively recently when he died. And his influence is still extraordinary, I think, within the American political system. There is a centre in America called the Centre for Strategic and International Studies, which you'll see like the current National Security Advisor spoke at in early this year around what American grand strategy in uh, in uh, the Middle East and Central Asia should be. So it, it is very much, uh, I guess, Brzezinski is a window into the real thinking behind America's presence in Afghanistan. And it, Brzezinski was uh, known as a, I think, the little profile of him on the Center for Strategic and International Studies website describes him as a pugilistic Cold War warrior. There's pictures of him discussing uh, matters with Obama and all the rest of it. So he's an incredibly influential figure. And in the late 1970s, he was Jimmy Carter's national security advisor and really the architect of America's entry into Afghanistan. And uh, Brzezinski wrote his memos, I guess. He gave his advice to to presidents. Uh, But he also wrote quite a bit, including a a book called The Grand Chessboard, American Primacy and Its Geostrategic Imperatives, uh, which he wrote in 1997. And very much it's his kind of... Uh, magnum opus, so to speak, that expresses his worldview and is uh, perhaps the the most comprehensive and intellectually sophisticated, maybe, expression of American dominance in the unipolar moment. Now he was a he had a you know virulent dislike of the, the Soviet Union uh, and Russia uh, being a pole, and I think that to some degree dominated his outlook. And there's a funny sort of persistence of his presence today too in that the American journalist or, or I don't know, do you call a person who just presents a show a journalist or a TV presenter called Mika, uh, Mika Brzezinski who appears on Morning Joe in America, which is a, a, a television program that sort of, I guess, sets the agenda to some degree for uh, American politics. She is Zbigniew Brzezinski's daughter. What did Mr. Brzezinski to say about Eurasia and the role of Afghanistan and the geostrategic reasons for America to be in Afghanistan? He wrote in his book, and if I just quote here, For America, the chief geopolitical prize is Eurasia. For half a millennium, world affairs were dominated by Eurasian powers and peoples who fought with one another for regional domination and reached out for global power. Now a non-Eurasian power is preeminent in Eurasia and America's global primacy is directly dependent on how long and how effectively its predominance on the Eurasian continent is sustained. 
And you can see, therefore, why losing Afghanistan is so significant for America. Brzezinski advocated control of, if you like, continental bridgeheads that would pen in the pivot area in Mackinder's term or the Soviet Union in Brzezinski's thinking and identified a third defensive front, i.e. Afghanistan, which would also limit limit America. He had placed great importance to Ukraine and also a number of the other sort of areas that would, you know, restrict restrict uh, Russia in particular. Of course, Afghanistan also had the benefit of supporting the US military presence in the Persian Gulf and was a t- deterrent to southward projection of Soviet political or military power. Brzezinski, as the title of his book said, saw Eurasia as the grand chessboard. And there's something, if you read his book, it, there's something chilling really about the way in which uh, this American advisor feels he can just sort of map out the, the path for the whole world. But so he describes it. And he very much saw himself as the great chess master playing uh, sophisticated geostrategic games with the map of the world. All of the potential political and or economic challenges to American primacy, Brzezinski wrote, are Eurasian. Cumulatively, Eurasia's power vastly overshadows America's. Fortunately for America, Eurasia is too big to be politically won. Eurasia is thus the chessboard on which the struggle for global primacy continues to be played. And central to that, of course, is preventing the uh, formation of some sort of regional security arrangements that would mean that Eurasia, if not one state, is at least one sort of diplomatic system. In this context, Brzezinski wrote, The time has come, and this is in the late 1990s, I should say before America took revenge on Osama bin Laden by uh, conducting its war with Afghanistan. Time has come for the United States to formulate and prosecute an integrated, comprehensive and long-term geo-strategy for all of Eurasia. This need arises out of the interaction between two fundamental realities. America is now the only global superpower and Eurasia is the globe's central arena. Hence what happens to the distribution of power on the Eurasian continent will be of decisive importance to America's global primacy and to America's historical legacy. In brief, for the United States, Eurasian geostrategy involves the purposeful management of geostrategically dynamic states and the careful handling of geopolitically catalytic states. And I might just intervene there to say that he basically described Central Asia as the Eurasian Balkans, and so he was wanting to exploit any domestic instability in those regions for the benefits of United States projection of power. And that's what geostrategically dynamic and geopolitically catalytic means, Basically, he wants to keep them divided, weak and unstable so that America can be a dominant political and economic force in those areas. In keeping with the twin interests of America in the short-term preservation of its unique global power and in the long-run transformation of it into increasingly institutionalised global cooperation. To put it in a terminology that harkens back to the more brutal age of ancient empires, the three grand imperatives of imperial geostrategy are to prevent collusion, i.e. between rival states, e.g. China and Russia, and maintain security dependence among the vassals, to keep tributaries pliant and protected, and to keep the barbarians from coming together. And in vocalising, I guess, those thoughts, uh, Brzezinski showed himself to be perhaps a far more brutal person than he may be presented as on the Centre for Strategic and International Studies website. On the eve of 9-11, 
the event that precipitated uh, America's latest intervention in Afghanistan after their intervention in the late 1970s to support the Mujahideen on Brzezinski's initiative. On the eve of 9-11, Brzezinski wrote, the basis for American geostrategy is, and I quote, hard-nosed recognition of the three unprecedented conditions that currently define the geopolitical state of world affairs. For the first time in history, one, a single state is a truly global power. Two, a non-Eurasian state is globally the preeminent state. And three, the globe's central arena, Eurasia, is dominated by a non-Eurasian power. Effectively, Brzezinski was restating Halford Mackinder's comment that who rules East Europe commands the heartland, who rules the heartland commands the world island, who rules the world island commands the world. Except he was updating it to say that it wasn't that that um, the Atlantic was able to rule the heartland from afar for its projection of economic, political, security, air power, all the rest of it. And this is the real reason America was in Afghanistan. It's to have that central presence in that uh, Eurasia to maintain the sort of the to, to fracture all the regional powers in that area and to project its power far far away from home and you can see this still in some of the american reaction like just as incidentally i heard uh, rudy giuliani uh, say that it was a what america needed to do now i don't know Advocating this, I'm just saying this is an example of a response of American elites. And Giuliani was absolutely neo con, uh, who would have fought like Brzezinski in the late 1990s, even if he's more recently allied with Donald Trump. But his comment about losing Afghanistan was well, we need to go back in and take the air bases because we need an air base near China. We need that Bagram air base that's 400 kilometres from the Chinese border because, well, America needs to control the central Eurasian heartland. So there's certainly, I, 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 I'd grant there are almost certainly secondary objectives that people have around nation building and social progress, protecting women. And probably also secondary objectives people have in terms of the systems of contracted, the huge economic systems that are built around the American occupation of Afghanistan. But fundamentally, I think the core reason for America being in Afghanistan is this geostrategic reason. The brutal hard reality is this geostrategic reason. And that is why... America's defeat in Afghanistan has thrown its entire geostrategic diplomatic system into such a crisis because Brzezinski's concept is now questionable. America is no longer... uh, There is not only a single state that is a truly global power. Uh, That single state is unable to dominate the country of Afghanistan. It's been defeated by the Taliban. A non-Eurasian state is not only the globally preeminent state, it is being challenged by China. And the globe's central arena, Eurasia, is no longer dominated by a non-Eurasian power. It is much more a concert of power situation, a balance of power situation with American presence, with Russian presence, with Chinese presence and with a rather complicated situation with all the other major states in the region, India, etc, etc. And this is why, why the imperial crisis in the heartland of the World Island at the summit of the World Island in Afghanistan is such a crisis 
for America. <laughs>